Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 19, 2023. Glad that you are with me today. Today is National Potato Day, World Humanitarian Day, Afghanistan Independence Day, Crown Princess Mete Merits Day, International Bow Day, and International Geo geocaching day let's go ahead and get started jesus says take heart i am here do not be afraid come holy spirit kindle the fire of faith in our hearts amen and amen our reading for today comes from math er, exodus chapter 19 verse 9b to 15 Listen for God's word to speak to you. When Moses had told the words of the people to Adonai, Adonai said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day Adonai will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Be careful not to go up the mountain or to touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet, trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today is, uh, remember, God has said to this people that I'm going to make you something new. You are going to be my treasured possession. Among all the peoples of the world, there's going to be a special focus on you. You're to be a priestly kingdom. Holy. We talked about how the purpose of that is for all the other people, that they are chosen for a purpose. And the people at this point have said absolutely positively, we will do whatever the Lord says of us. We will be those people. So Moses has now gone up to the mountain to speak to the Lord and says, yep, the people are on board. God says, great. Take three days and consecrate them. Get them ready. What they are going to do is going to mean that they need to have no sin about them. They need to be clean. And so we're beginning this sort of idea of clean and unclean from a religious standpoint. doesn't mean... It's not the same thing as sinful and unsinful, or even moral or amoral. It is about, um, yeah, it's it's cleanliness, purity, is much more uh, what it's about. So they're going to take three days. That's a period that means that any anything that they have done to make themselves unclean, along with the washing that they are going to undertake is going to mean that at the end of this period of time, they will be ritually clean. 
So they wash themselves, they wash their clothes, they refrain from sexual interaction. They are to just be ready. They're getting ready for themselves or they're getting themselves ready. What are they getting themselves ready for? They're getting themselves ready to go meet God because they are called to be priests. They are called to be those who mediate on behalf of all of humanity before the living God. They, like Moses, are going to go before the living God. That is the purpose expressly. We know this because there is um, the mountain is being marked off, right? There are boundary lines. And no one who goes near the mountain before the appointed time is allowed to live. In fact, they're to be shot with an arrow or have stones thrown at them. Why? Because they are not ritually clean and they go near the presence of the living God. And it's like if you go too close to the sun. It's not that the sun hates you, it's just that the sun is far too powerful and you will be overwhelmed. That's the kind of idea that we have here. The God is so powerful, so pure, that this idea of being clean as opposed to unclean is actually a saving grace. That if we go near the living God while being ritually unclean, God's power will just overwhelm us. God is so full of life that anything around death about us is going to just be obliterated and us along with it. And so there are cultural practices, and most of them actually have to do with death. You touch a dead body, you are ritually unclean. But also something like sex, where th this is a... It's the boundary line between life and death. It is life force coming out and being received. Again, heteronormative and also sort of um, with the expectation that there's going to be birth. But at least that's a possibility. Childbirth uh, is also something that can make you ritually unclean because it is, especially for the ancient people, this boundary between life and death. So many infants, so many women died in this dangerous barrier between life and death. So take it seriously. All of these things have to do with the things of death that make us unclean. Refrain from those things. Wash away that literal impurity. Wash your clothes. Wash your face. Wash your bodies. Make sure that you are clean. Refrain from those activities that would make you ritually unclean. And I, I'll explain more about that later, right? Says God. That's, there's going to be an explanation of that. But for now, you just need to prepare yourself. With clean hands. And wide eyes. And when you are ready, when you are clean, when the time has has gone and there's a long trumpet blast all of the people you notice all of the people will come up on the mountain they are to go and meet god every sunday morning every time we gather for this daily prayer we enter god's presence We come up on the mountain. We enter the throne room of the living God. And so often we don't really take that particularly seriously. It's just what we do. Well, we are entering into the presence of the living God. 
And so some time of preparation might be helpful. We have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are clean. We can enter into that presence without a three-day period. But if for us, if nothing else, a time of reflection and understanding that we're entering into this time in this place is helpful. To enter into the right frame of mind, we are entering into worship. We are reading the inspired word of God. These people are invited to come onto the mountain to be a priestly nation. So some preparation is required. I invite you to take some time in preparation in prayer and considering what does it mean for me to enter into the presence of the living God, to come up onto the holy mountain, to stand on holy ground, to enter into the very presence of the living God. Take some time to journal to meditate, to pray, to consider. What does this mean? And when you are ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer and praise. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to recognize you when our neighbors say, I am hungry. Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray for Brock, who is recovering from eye surgery. For Jane Ann, who fell this week and has broken her left knee and is recovering. For Ethan, a friend of Bill's. For the Mayfields in the search for a house. For Brianna's friend, friend's mother, excuse me. For Tom, a friend of Amy's. For Zoe, Amy's granddaughter. And for Viola with an online request. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality. Dismantle structural racism. Eradicate systemic poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I give you food? Bless what we have done. Forgive what we have failed to do, and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am with you always. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Presbyterian Mission Agency Matthew 25 resources, and our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible with my own little tweaks. If you want to learn more about the Matthew 25 vision, join us this Sunday evening at 5 um, for an exploration of that uh, is called August Cooldown Nights, after which is our 6 p.m. free concert series. This Sunday will feature Taylor White, who is a soprano, who's going to be singing some um, selections from African-American composers from the NOLA area and telling us about it, sort of a lecture as well as concert series. Next week is the Stephen Minold Quartet playing A love supreme in its entirety. Keep blanking. Anyways, uh, yeah, so join us for those. Also, of course, join us tomorrow morning for worship at 1030, either in person or virtually. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify or your podcast server of choice. And you can uh, sign up for a daily email with both of those versions just sent directly to you. Just sign up at Substack. Yeah, the links for all of those are below. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day and we'll see you next time. Bye.